Hey, LinkedIn. Happy Friday. Happy last day of Inbound. It's Liam Redding, HubSpot strategist with Remotish Agency. Um, and I'm coming here today on this Friday to do a really fun uh, highlight of a tool that's available in HubSpot. I think it's very relevant to a lot of the conversations that have been had at, at uh, Inbound so far this week. Uh, so I wanted to go over private content. It's really amazing, powerful feature that HubSpot offers. And I don't think we talk about it enough. I haven't seen enough content about it. And it's relevant. It's super relevant to building a community. And that's been one of the biggest takeaways that I've had from Inbound is that the next wave of marketing, the next wave of growth for companies is to really get serious about your strategy for community-led growth. So let's take a listen into some of the HubSpot leaders. Um, we're going to listen to Brian Halligan, who is the former CEO, as well as Darmesh, who is the current CTO, about their thoughts around community-led growth. At HubSpot, many of your companies likely had a similar evolution. It starts with sales-led growth. That's just a person selling to another person. In the early days of HubSpot, Brian was doing all the selling. So for us, it was Brian-led growth. And the value sales added to the process was consultation. The best salespeople consulted with customers, helped them understand their challenges, and connect them to possible solutions. Then came marketing-led growth. The value being added here was content. Things like blogs and white papers and videos. This didn't replace sales. This fueled sales. And then there was product-led growth. Value here, code. In HubSpot's case, we have our free CRM and our free suite of connected applications. And now there's community-led growth. It's the new kid on the block, and it has all the right stuff. You just have to take it step by step. Thank you. The value added with community is connection. Um, in terms of what's next, I actually think Darmesh nailed it today where um, you had content marketing, inbound marketing, con let's call it content marketing, you make it easy, you have product-led uh, growth, and now we're going to have community-led growth. I think it's the next cool kid in town. I think it works. I think decisions get made in communities. I think people are, are desirous of communities. And um, I think that's the next big wave. Sales, and then it was content marketing, inbound marketing, product-led growth, community-led growth. That's sort of the wave. And so to the extent you guys can pull it off, you guys and gals can pull it off, try to create your own community. I don't know if it's this big or uh, it's nascent, but to the extent you can pull it off, I think that's the next wave. So there you have it. Two of the greatest innovators, the minds that created HubSpot, uh, they think that the next wave of marketing the next wave of business is community-led growth. The most ironic thing about that is that they've created the perfect solution to uh, essentially create and host content for a community, and that's through private content. So I'm going to go over private content today. I have a really badass project that I've been working on, uh, supported by an amazing team of developers and marketers that are helping enable me to uh, to create this, and it's the final product is going to be amazing and very excited to hopefully one day, you know, do a, a case study on that. Uh, but in the meantime, I just wanted to go over this to show you the possibilities. You know, this is a big trend that's coming out of inbound. And I think this is a tool that's not talked about enough. So I want to go over private content, how you would go about building out that solution in HubSpot and, and all the things that you need to take into consideration when doing so. Uh, and the thing about it is, why would you you know, you may ask, why would you come out and, and give everybody the solution if that's what Remotish, you know, sells? Uh, anybody can, you know, build out this infrastructure. It's, I mean, it, it the pro and the con of private content is that you have full ability to customize the experience, the user experience, um, you know, because you're starting from scratch. It's, you have to develop the solution yourself. That's the the pro, but the con then also is you have to develop everything yourself. Uh, so we have an amazing team of developers at Remotish. And if anybody is looking to build out some kind of gated private content user portal, uh, then there's no better team to support you than ours. So I'm going to go through a quick demo of how private content works and everything that you need to know about it. So 
every page is going to have a uh, setting that you need to set. And it's this under advanced options of the settings tab, private registration required, and you need to choose a list. So the way this works in HubSpot is that anybody who's enrolled in that selected list will be sent a registration email uh, once this page is published to a connected domain. So it has to be a public domain. If you were to try to test on a like a sandbox domain, uh, like the HS dash whatever domain, it's not going to actually allow you, it's not going to ever fire out the registration email. Therefore, you're never going to be able to sign up and get access to it. So in order to do, to do testing, you need to publish it to a live site and uh, then you can use these lists to control access. So here we can see I have community members, master list, and we'll go over the list strategy momentarily. So the other settings that we need to be aware of is the, and these are the ones that actually control all of the content, is in the settings tab. And then you scroll down to website and at the bottom down here where my image is covering, it says private content. So here's where you would set your community admin and then you would put your company or community name. These are the destinations that you wanna to redirect to after somebody registers, signs in, or signs out. Uh, the, they come with default assets, but uh, you definitely wanna customize these, like add headers and footers and making sure it you know, meets your brand standard and everything like that. Uh, but you also then have registration invitation email. So that's gonna be the email that's sent out um, after they become a member of that list, once it's published to a live site. The password confirmation email. So once they go through that registration, they fill out a form to create their account. Uh, it's gonna fire off an email to them, letting them know that their password has been set. And then a password reset email. So all these have default emails. Again, you're gonna wanna develop your own. Uh, you can just create email templates and then save them and populate them here. And those will fire off as transactional emails. Under templates, we have the registration page, and this is where they would create their password. And that's uh, essentially the flow that happens is there is a gated landing page that includes a registration form. We'll go over this registration form momentarily. Once they sign up on that form, the form is going to populate them into the master list based on the fields that are collected. There's one hidden field for the community member that marks them as yes. You go look at that. So the community member is a hidden field, marks them as yes, that's pre-selected. And then which description best fits you, there's personas that they can choose from. And the reason why that we built that in for this use case is because we wanted to use smart content to deliver customized experiences within the user dashboard. So if we go back to the settings, the user flow that occurs is they fill out that form, they become a member of the list, they're then sent a registration email. So it's that email that we just looked at. And that does take about four to five, anywhere from three to five minutes to send, which is uh, something that can be approved on, on HubSpot side. Um, if you request a password, like a new password, then that comes immediately, but the registration email does take a moment. And that email then gives you that user access to sign up. And unless you get that email, you are not able to sign up. So if you just like, randomly access to that page by typing in the, the systems page uh, URL, you wouldn't be able to sign up. So you have to have it delivered to your email, click the link, sign up, uh, and then you're taken to the sign in page where your information auto populates, you click login, and it takes you into the dashboard. We also have a password reset page so that when the password reset email is sent, uh, it takes them to this systems page. And none of these templates over here are needed. You don't need an access denied page because if somebody were to type in the, the gated URL and uh, it's not gonna take them to an access denied page, it's gonna take them to registration, uh, the registration page. If a, a user signs out, again, it's gonna take them to the sign in page. Actually, that's what it's gonna take them in. If it's access denied, it's gonna take them to sign in, not register. And then on your sign in page, you need to have a link to register. Uh, that takes them to the landing page with the registration form that gates um, the access to the page. And once they're uploaded into that list, it fires off the registration email where they can access this. And then the create new password page, that is actually needed. But the access denied and sign out page are not. Just to be safe, if you wanted to, you could develop that, um, but 
yeah, I've tested it out and it works really well. So this is the master list. It's the community member is any of yes and community persona is known. That's going to be attached to every single page that you've created for that user portal under this advanced option setting. So we save that and we publish it and that fires off the email. The user experience from like one gated page to another gated page is very clean. You don't have to sign in again. It's just like a normal website experience. So that's essentially the flow for a user creation, how they become a member of that list, and then how you set up those lists on all of the pages, how you set up all the settings. Then you need to delete the user. So, and you may or may not want that to be possible, but in our use case, we did. So we have a profile page where a user can go in, they can update their information. Uh, we're trying to build in a profile uh, picture functionality. They can um, re request a new password, or they can delete their account. And essentially the delete my account functionality is triggered by a CTA. So we've created a CTA called delete my account. We've coded that into the page. We're working on adding in like a, almost like a 2FA where they have to like, you know, confirm that they want to delete their account by typing something in, or right now we have it gated by a pop-up, um, but we're, we're still looking to improve that. And then, this is a new feature in HubSpot to delete a contact, but this is necessary in order to really control this user flow. Uh, so what's going to happen is this allows for the contact to then re-register, but if you did not delete the contact, it doesn't allow them to re-register. So you have to actually delete the entire contact from your CRM. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing before that, though, is you can connect your Google Sheet integration. And then when somebody deletes their account, you can populate all their data into a Google Sheet before you delete their record so that you at least have a, you capture a static record of everybody who's ever deleted their account. If you ever need to upload that back into HubSpot or go back and find somebody's record, uh, you would then be able to do so. That is pretty much everything there is about the private content. Um, the other thing that is really cool about it is once you have that page set up, you can then come in here and you can then add smart rules. So we, again, are going to base that off list membership. And then we can use any of our persona lists. So we can say is any of persona one, any of persona two, persona three, persona four. And then you can come in here and you can edit the content. So I put in uh, hello, first name. And then you could customize all the content for Persona 1. You can then switch over to Persona 2. Persona 2 would see different content than Persona 1 and so forth. So that's another really cool functionality. You can, um, you can add the smart content. You can also then use personalization tokens. So any of the data points that you keep on your contacts or your companies, you can then display that back to them. Uh, so yeah, if you have this connected to other systems, you can display stats, you can display um, it really the, the possibilities of this are pretty much endless. You could probably create a forum. I don't know exactly how that would work, um, but you may be able to create a system where users connect can connect with other users. Um, they can get access to, you know, different products that you might offer. Uh, the things that you can do with private content uh, is pretty wild. So I hope this got some people's uh, mind stirring and thinking about some ways that you could use this. Again, this is a huge, huge topic uh, that's coming out of Inbound, and they've created the perfect tool for it. So I figured that I would shed a little bit of light on this tool because it's something that I've become very familiar with over the last several months and some of the features and functionalities are just mind blowing uh, and it's really, really cool what we're able to build. So please drop all your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your concerns in the, uh, in the comments below. I really appreciate everybody's continued engagement and I hope you find the content useful. Thank you very much. I hope everybody who's attending Inbound has a great day, final day of sessions.